So we're back here to go ahead and get our floor welded in and to do a little bit more tricks on it. We're going to show you how we think we're going to tackle the tunnel and the inside piece of our floor pan. And uh, well, let's go ahead and get started. All right, we're picking up work on our Spitfire floor. We left off with it clecoed in and we've been thinking about how to attack the uh, inner inner piece here where the uh, tunnel is. So my plan is basically as follows. I've got a rough line here, which I have marked out, and we're gonna pull the floor out, and we're gonna go ahead and prep the floor to be welded in. So we're gonna take some of the E-coating off along here, and we're gonna take it off on that line down there, and we can use some weld through primer, but we'll clean up all the edges that we need so we can go ahead and work on getting this welded in. I'm actually pretty comfortable at this juncture welding the sides here and in the front because I think we've got our positioning with our Clecos where we want it. We did all our measuring. I was hesitant to do that last time in the last video because I wanted to make sure I, I figured out how I wanted to do this. So what I'm planning to do is straighten this line out with just kind of cut that line a little straighter or just grind it smooth. And I'm going to come through and there was a YouTube video I watched and I shared it on MeWe of all places. And I'll have to post a link to it on this channel, but it was an interesting way of putting a panel on a body. It was actually doing like a, a gas filler door, like a gas filler door on a straight panel. And, and the person who did it, and I apologize, I don't remember the name, I'll put it on the video here, but it was a really interesting tactic of putting the piece over it tack welding it in place and then coming along with your cutting wheel cutting it at an angle to end up with a really tight butt weld and then going around as you cut doing the welds and then the piece in the back would basically pull off and you'd end up with a nice clean butt weld and that's kind of what the struggle has been with this big line is how do i cut this perfectly and end up with a nice butt weld and then the other one i did i did it by measuring and then cutting and then refitting and then finding that I had a gap in some areas because my measuring wasn't perfect. And that's just a really tough way and time consuming way to get it perfect. And we really did take a lot of time on that other one. So now that we've done this, we've got our piece fitted up. I now have a nice close fit here, as you can see. Um, all I've got to do is, you know, kind of clamp these together. And they're they're super close. I mean, they're they're pretty much touching in some areas. Even here, this is lined right up. So what I'm planning to do, just to wrap it up here, because I'm talking too long, get this nice and straight and try that tactic. So what I'm going to do is come in here and tack these together, come in with my cutoff wheel. I'm probably going to go up this way at a 45 degree angle and then come along each place, push the pieces together, like push this down into there, weld it and come along and do tack welds every couple inches, get the entire piece tacked in. The stripping of this that's up above will come out from, from the bottom, we'll pull it away. And then I'll have a nice, perfect butt weld line and I'll be able to come in and finish weld it. So that's what our tack is gonna be on this. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, fit this maybe two or three more times with the Clecos just to get it right, get it where I'm happy. Then I'm going to go ahead and start welding this in. And then once this is welded in and solid, and I know there's no chance of it moving, I'm going to come in and I'm going to attempt to do that butt weld trick here. And uh, well, we'll see how it goes. nice thing is we'll be able to put them back exactly where they were and replicate the fitment that we have. In case you're ever wondering when I'm grinding on stuff, do I have hearing protection in? I don't know if you can see. But I do. I'm using these uh, disposable little earbuds. They work really good. Keep them in while you're working. 
they're pretty comfortable and uh, they're not the big bulky earmuffs that get in the way of the helmets and the various other things that you use. So um, yeah, they're nice. I'm sure you were super excited about what type of hearing protection I had, but in all honesty, oh, got to put that on tight. In all honesty, it's good to have a lot of these grinders. They make a really, really bad noise. You don't want to end up damaging your hearing or getting tinnitus, which would be probably the worst thing in the world. So get yourself some good hearing protection. All right, we can move this out of the way for the time being. But as you can see, we have our little line there. And that just gives us a reference for where we can trim our E-coating. We're not using that as a cut line. We're just using that as a line to trim the E-coating. All right, so this is the line I want to come in with my roll lock disc and just try to straighten that line up. And then I have a bit of a cut line right there. I think I'm going to go ahead and trim some of that because uh, I think I drilled out these spot welds. So I'd like to replace that with new metal, which I'll do on the new piece. So I'm going to cut that cut line a little bit. You know, I was real happy with these last year. The ones I had, I never had them fly off like that. This is a new thing. All right, so part of the problem is here, our piece is nice and stable, but as we get over here, there's no support holding this in. So I could put a little tiny support here to kind of brace this a little bit, and I might consider doing that. That would actually be pretty easy to do and help keep my shape. But at the same time, I actually like having the flexibility here because when I go to pull my panels together, it's going to be nice to be able to have this shape very easily. So I'm, I'm not sure I want to brace that just yet. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and just work on my cuts and my trims. Turn that up at the roll lock, it's all good. I'm kind of stuck in a cage here. What do I want to do? So I'm thinking. So hold tight, I'm thinking. I don't think I need to refit the floor because all I did was clean this lineup and I trimmed this a little bit. And as long as I trim all of the E coating in the lines that I drew, I'm going to be fine. So the only reason I would refit it now would be to check to make sure that I grind off enough E coating, but I know where I'm going to be doing that. So I might as well grind the E coating and then fit it. And that'll save at least one step. Cause literally I'd be fitting it, clicoing it in just to make sure that I'm happy with where I'm going to grind E coat. I might as well grind the e-coat and do that, and then I can check fitment at that point. So, save a step where possible. I know I always say, be prepared to fit and refit all the time, but it's not always necessary. So this is going to be incredibly boring and I'm going to ruin a several Rolex discs, but I'm going to go ahead and grind off the e coating. and you might be asking yourself, Hey, your line is there. Grind that off. That's great. And, uh, but why are you doing the edge? Why are you doing this? Well, the point is I do want to weld it into our edge here, but I'm also going to prep our a post pillar. I'm going to grind that down and I'm going to grind here because once I weld it in, I might not have room to come in here and do that. So I'm gonna prep this, 
and I'm even going to get our spot weld holes in this uh, panel here before I mount that in. So always think ahead of things that you're going to need to do. Same with the back piece here. We're going to need to do the same thing here. Uh, this is small enough I can drill through. I think that I cut this longer, so I don't know exactly where my holes need to be. But I'm going to at least get the, uh, well, this is weld through primer, so this is already good. But I'm going to prep the e-coating on any other surfaces that are going to be otherwise covered when I have the floor installed. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to be removing some e-coating for the next few minutes. And, uh, well, we'll see you in a bit. Why did I do that? I need this. I need this tool. I'm trying to look cool on camera. All I was coming over here was for a, a Rolock disc. We've gone ahead and got our e-coating ground off and we've got our spot weld holes in. I left myself a little cheat sheet by putting Sharpie lines wherever our Clecos go. And uh, yeah, I sure do have a lot of closed spot welds, don't I? That's a lot closer than normal. I actually put a lot more Clecos on this than uh, I have on other pieces. So to make up for that, I spaced the uh, spot welds a little closer, but we shouldn't have any problem with that. We'll skip around and it'll be a little more like a stitch weld. So it'll end up turning out good. So I'm only spraying the weld through primer on the areas that are going to be sandwiched between panels to make sure we have a nice coverage and sealant there. And I don't want to go overboard. I just want a little bit because I find if you really douse this stuff on and you don't use quality stuff, it can be a little bit hard to weld through. So I just want to put a little bit on for protection, but make sure I can get a good strong weld through it. All right, so we've got it clicoed in. Everything's looking pretty good. Everything's looking like it's gonna fit. Everything seems good and aligned and measured where we wanted it. Our piece up here looks pretty good, which we'll show you a little later on. So I think we're ready to burn in our edges and then we can work on that inner piece in a little bit. So we'll start doing some of these. I do have a lot of clicos here, but remember this is a big piece and I really wanted to make sure that this thing was gonna be steady and also kind of steady the firewall against the floor pan and everything like that. So we'll do some, uh, some quick measurements, make sure that we're happy, and then we're gonna start burning it in. All right, so we've been doing a little bit of welding and getting rid of our Clecos. And uh, most of them are pretty good. There's a couple that aren't the best, but the bulk of them are pretty decent MIG spot welds. I'm happy with them. Same with up here. So all of our Clecos are now gone. So we had some regular spot welds and then we had some fills where we had the Clecos. There is this one spot right here. I'm not gonna touch it, it's probably still warm, but this is uh, an area we need to actually trim this. So there'll be a slight trim, which uh, corresponds to the first one we put in. There's a little bit of extra material on these floor pans so you can trim a little bit on the transmission tunnel. But other than that, we're looking pretty good. So what we've done basically is just get the uh, front and back bottom pieces of the floor pan welded on. 
so it is now a solid piece. We have not done anything here yet. And in fact, one thing we haven't done is come down around the flange and weld that yet. We're gonna hold on that because we're gonna have to hammer and dolly this a little bit to get it to fit. And we're gonna probably be trimming and we've got to trim in here and get this lined up. So we left that as is for now, just like this whole piece so we could work it. We also haven't done anything with the flanges up here or with our A-post uh, bottom piece, whatever you call it. <laughs> and uh, we're not gonna be doing that for a while until we start doing our inner rocker and stuff like that, because I wanna leave that to where we have the ability to move it and manipulate it if we need to. Um, but the good news is our floor measured okay. Everything seemed to be right, like we had left it with the Clecos. Now we've got it welded in and we can focus our attention on the bottom piece here. And you can even see with some of the cutting that we've done, this is one of the original lines that we put right here. With some of the trimming that we did, we were able to butt this piece up right next to the piece in there. So I'll flip the car so you can see how clean and easy that's gonna be. In fact, let me go ahead and do that. So if you look at that line, you can see we've got a nice straight line. And in all reality, there's a very small gap here. You can very easily push the tunnel, especially up here, and completely close that gap. Same with up here, you can push down, completely close that gap, get this curved piece, everything lines up good. So this is gonna be a perfect very easy butt weld right here where we come in and we cut so we'll kind of push this down tack it and then we can come through and cut in between the tacks weld the pieces in and the idea is that the piece in the back will drop off i apologize having the heat on in here it's a little bit chilly today and i don't have the external mic which often cuts that out so i apologize if the audio is not as good but anyway as you can see in here a little bit of hammer and dolly work this is good, but I'm noticing right here, there's a little bit of a curve outward. I'll be able to hammer and dolly that in and tighten that up nice. We're pretty tight along here and even tighter, like right here. This is completely butted up right here. This is essentially ready to tack. And then of course, right in here, we know we have to do some hammer and dolly work, but if we bring that in, it's gonna butt up really nicely to there. So I think this is the way to do it. I did not do it this way last time and it was a pain and it looked like a mess because i had to make like two or three patch pieces and i'd use the shrinker stretcher and it was just a ton of work but check out our fitment i think we did a much better job fitting this one now the key is to see if i have the skills to come in and do what i'm saying i guess we'll find out in a minute but that's what this is all about it's about two things it's about restoring this car and someday getting to drive it and enjoy it but it's also the fun of learning how to do this stuff all right, a slight change of venue. It's the same day, but we went ahead and rolled the car out into the main area here, moved the other cars out so we had room. And uh, the reason is I want to be able to cut in here, but I want to cut from the other side. So being able to get to the back of the rotisserie is going to be pretty important for this step. So that's why we moved it. So what I'm going to do is try to mount a camera here so you can see what we're doing and just walk you through it as we do it. And let's just hope that it works on the cameras, but otherwise, we're gonna press ahead with what we gotta do. All right, so I do have the camera running in here, so you can see me there. And as you can see, I have put a clamp here because what I'm gonna do is start here where it's most flexible. And uh, this is actually least flexible right here because this is a big chunk of metal. This is bent, this piece goes to about right here. So modifying this bend on the floor pan is not gonna be easy, but tweaking this bend to fit it is a lot simpler. Plus this is the stamped piece, so I know this curve is right. So lining this curve up to this and being our starting point seems like a good place to start. And it, as you can tell, butts up very easily. So what I'm gonna do is come in with the welder and I'm just gonna tack, tack, and then I'm gonna move clamps. I'm gonna reach behind, so imagine my, this hand is up underneath. Which I'll see if I can show you with the other camera. I'm gonna come along as I tack this, I'll move myself in and either push up 
or use a hammer end and, and push together and basically sandwich these. The whole idea will leave tacks every couple inches and bring this all together nice and tight. So that's the theory. Let's try it out. an all right tack, all things considered. I think I'm missing the mark. It's kind of hard reaching in through all this maze of uh, tubing that I have holding the car together and see through the welding helmet. Even I got this nice helmet. So that's me and my bad skills more than anything. There, that's what I was looking for. A nice, simple, very quick tack. There. Look at how much easier it is when you get yourself better access, but that's not a good excuse. I should practice my welding so that I'm a little more proficient welding off center and hanging my head in weird places and having the reach like really crazy. That shouldn't be an excuse. All right, so that's got us some tacks along here and brought it in nice and close. So now we're flush here, but then we start to get a gap. But this is where I should be able to come along the backside and push it together. Okay, so now my plan is to try and come up here and weld there without burning my fingers. Let's see if these gloves work. No. Alright. That's not gonna work. that that did it so I uh, refined my method Clico's not a good idea but a self drilling screw and to avoid hogging the hole out I'm just gonna hand tight them in using a smaller drill bit let them self drill and look at how it pulled that in I'm gonna see how tight it'll actually pull it I remember I used these on the uh, truck oh that's that's tight right there that's good. I used these on the bed of the truck when I put the bed rails in. I found that self-tapping screws was one of the best things to bring it in where I couldn't get it in, where I couldn't get clamps or anything. I would use these and then fill the holes in, and that turned out great. And this seems to be working really well. I've got a nice spot for a tack, um, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get that tack in while I can. So these holes that are going to be left are going to be smaller than 3 16 so they're going to be real easy to plug weld. It's 
So once these cool off, I'll be able to move these over to here and we'll go ahead and get the rest of this tacked. And we're pretty close to where we wanna be because now I can see from up here, I got a clear shot. I can come in, make my cuts, um, clearing the tacks one at a time and then push this all back together an inch at a time and put the butt welds in and then come back around and do the stitch. So, All right, so I'm getting my get up back in so I can show you and take you along with the camera here. But really quick, let's catch you up a little bit. You should be able to see on the small camera we have inside here that we have gone ahead and got all our tacks in. We've got the two panels butted up together. Well, they're not butted up together, they're overlapping, but they're nice and, and tight in that overlap. And what I found in order to get them there was it was a little too difficult to reach around, push, and weld at the same time. So I found some self-tapping screws were an excellent solution and allowed us to kind of bring those in. And we've got holes that are less than 3 16 of an inch that we'll need to fill in later. And we've only got a handful of them, maybe about 10. And that's really not that bad at all. So right now, as you can see, everything is all tack welded. So the whole idea behind this concept is that now that you have these butted up and tack welded, you can start on one end and you can cut and basically cut away the, the tack welds, but cut in between the two panels and then bring them together nice and level, weld them again, tack them again, but they'll be tacking the two pieces together. The strip of metal in the back that you don't need is now no longer connected. And as you go along the whole way, eventually you'll just cut through that piece and it'll be nice and perfect. But one of the key things that was in that video on how to do this was to minimize the gap that the cutting wheel leaves. And I'll show you here, was not to cut straight in, but to cut it at an angle. So to cut in like that. And that by cutting in at an angle, you're basically putting two um, opposing beveled edges on those pieces. So when you go to sandwich them together, it really minimizes the gap and allows for easier weld penetration. So that's the concept. And uh, the video is awesome. It shows it, you know, it was very helpful for me and gave me ideas of a new tactic. So it's certainly not my idea. Um, but what is gonna be interesting to see is can I apply that idea? Do I have the skills? And first time around, um, I've certainly used a cutoff wheel before, but can I go ahead and cut in there? And how well is that gonna work, especially on this type of a panel? Let's give it a shot. So the concept is a 45 degree angle, which is impossible because I, of the tunnel. So I might have to cut that one straighter. Look at that, I didn't think of that. So I've got a solution. All right, that'll let us do our 45 degree cut. Holy crap, this thing has no power. The concept is now we come up and kind of bend those up and do a, do a weld there. I think we're starting to get the hang of this, hopefully. That was a lot less of a gap to bridge. That was nice. I think we're starting to figure it out, hopefully. So what I have found on this car is that the original sheet metal around this tunnel is extremely thin and very easy to burn through if it gets hot. So what I'm doing is starting my welds on the fresh steel of this and then bridging them over to here 
as I get over further in, hopefully it'll get easier and I get my gaps tighter. But we'll be able to come in and fill this in. This isn't a horrible gap here, but it's not the best. Uh, this was a much better gap in a couple areas. I did burn through. Why is this thing always getting loose on me? Tighten that up. There we go. So we'll just keep going through as we're doing. Alright, so I'm still finding it pretty hard to push this stuff down. So what I've been doing is I'm actually cutting, leaving a little strip of metal here, and I can actually take this little screwdriver and leaving a couple of the spot welds, it actually pulls the metal together. And then if I need to, I can come in and in one spot do that. And it does leave a little bit of a hole that'll have to fill, but uh, not a huge deal. So this cut line, aside from burning out this spot right here, has gone a lot better and uh, we're a third of the way if not almost 40 percent of the way there and we're kind of in the easy stretch i shouldn't jinx it <laughs> but that's kind of what i see this as so what i'm going to do i'm going to cut another little longer strip because i think we're making some good headway and then we get past here we get into this area where i have a little less tax things are a little better uh, in terms of uh, when I started using, using the self-tapping screws. So I think we're moving along pretty good. All right, we're running out of battery. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the cameras and we're going to keep doing what we're doing. So it actually worked pretty well. We cut through at the 45 degree angle. The cuts weren't the cleanest thing in the world and the welds aren't exactly perfect. But when we were done, the floor is attached and it's solid and this fell off. So this was all our excess. This is what we probably would have tried to trim by hand and then try to fit. But instead we did it all in one single swipe which is pretty awesome and that means that process worked that process wasn't a hundred percent perfect like we talked about earlier the compound curves and being on the edge of where there was a 90 degree bend made it a little bit difficult to push and get things level and also well let me walk around and show you all in all the uh, cage that we have which keeps the body from flexing which is awesome it's keeping everything in order and has been nice and strong but it's tough to get yourself in here with uh with your tools and, and with your helmets on and everything and uh, that did make it a little bit more difficult but we've got the basic welds done they're not perfect the worst spot is over here and it looks very boogery and i don't even want to show you because i'm going to decide i'm still deciding if i want to cut that chunk out and put in a, a plate and and replace that um, just because I'm not exactly happy with it. Uh, that was where we had a lot of trouble getting our cutting wheel into there because of the tunnel. And we ended up, we ended up using this one for part of it. And this is like a Harbor Freight Special and has uh, the power of basically, if you like tied a mouse to the end of it and told it to spin that. I don't know why you would do that to a mouse, but I could probably just spin a, take a cutting disc and go like this and it would cut as well as that thing pretty much everywhere else we're in pretty good shape it's it's a single cut line we did have the uh, holes that we drilled that we had to fill so that's why there's some stuff spotted around also i cut into the two panels which meant some of the tack welds i cut on the other side of them so that meant there were little strips of uh, of the original tunnel that i had to pry off so if you see like this right here that's one of them there's there's some old stuff here so we got to grind those old tack welds down and just make sure we get the old material away so once we dress this it'll look a lot better it's not all the way welded there's still some spots you can see basically like this you can't just run a bead from one end to the other you would put too much heat into the panel 
And aside from burning through the super thin stuff that is this, which is like, like feels paper thin even on the lowest voltage. But since the thing is this type of sheet metal, you can't just run a bead all the way across. It'll warp and get too hot and overheat and everything. So you gotta do attack, do attack, do attack, do attack. Just sort of skip around, move around. And then when there's a lot of heat in the panel, take a break, come back, do some more. So it's a little tedious, but, um, and that kind of results too in this sort of blotchy looking, you know, it's not like what you see on Instagram, all the like laying dimes and stuff like that. No, it's, it's a bunch of tack welds that end up stitching together. And that's what you do on some of these large panels. So what'll end up happening is once we do finish all that stitching, clean this up, grind it down, it'll be nice and smooth. And then when we primer over it, it'll look like it wasn't even there. So it'll look like one single piece. But overall, I am really happy with how this came out. Um, as I think about the last one that I did, and I think it took me twice as long, and I had to fabricate some parts because I had cut first after measuring, and it still wasn't perfect. This just sort of eliminates the guesswork, and all you're really fighting with is your skill with the grinding cutoff wheel, how thick that grinding wheel is. I would also recommend getting the thinnest of those you can find. I, the ones I have are a little fat. Um, and uh, just the overall stuff, like working around the cage and the curves and can you get your cutoff wheel in here? All right, so it's about 11.30 right now and we started about 1 p.m. So we got a late start today, did some other stuff this morning. But um, the good thing is we kind of wanted today to get this thing welded in and we went from having it just clear code in to doing final fitment, doing the welding on that getting the uh, back section prepped and everything done. And here we are with the floor essentially welded in. We do have to do some more welding on that. And then we got to dress and clean those welds, but it is in and it is solid as it is. So we're going to flip the car over back on its uh, right side up and uh, we're going to put tools away and call it a night. So I'm not sure what else we'll have in this video. So if this happens to be the end of the video, then I appreciate you checking us out. Uh, if you like what you see and you want to follow this project, please drop us a subscribe, like the video, and, uh, well, we'll have more on Vortex Garage. And I get it. You're not supposed to. It's annoying when YouTube people say that, but it does help the algorithm stuff, and uh, I guess that's nice.